Now that we have a theory for decomposing representations into irreducible sub-representations, we consider tensor products. Now, tensor products might not seem so natural at first, so let's give an example to motivate. Recall, if we had pi irreducible unitary representation of our group over the complex numbers, we could define product of their matrix coefficients using convolution on L2 of G. So this is going to be the natural multiplication of functions when we're working on a group. Our rule is, if I take convolution of matrix coefficients, we pair up the outside entries okay, in the inner product, and then match up the inside entries to get another matrix coefficient. So this is supposed to be an analog of matrix multiplication. If we look at regular multiplication of functions, okay, so there we just multiply the values together, well, if I write the definitions for the matrix coefficients, okay, we recall if I have a tensor product, the way I would take the inner product of two vectors in our tensor product is to match things up as so. So if I want to multiply two functions by the values, what we're doing is introducing a tensor product if we want to work with representations. Now, problem here, if we want to compute, well, if I want an orthonormal basis of our tensor product, okay, our first step would be to go to the irreducibles. So I want to know how do I decompose a tensor product into irreducibles. Now, we're just interested in the general problem of decomposing tensor products. So we have two representations, pi v, pi prime v prime. We want to form the tensor product. So the way that our group action works, Okay, if I have a monomial tensor, I'm just going to let our group action act on each piece simultaneously. And then we just linearly extend to the set of all tensors. Now, if we have unitary representations, then this is how we define the Hermitian inner product on the tensor space. And of course, we extend bilinearly here. That gives a new unitary representation. Now, main problem. Okay, we have this business of full reducibility, which says if we have any representation of our finite group G, we decompose it into an orthogonal direct sum of irreducible sub-representations. So the problem is, I want to find the types that occur and their multiplicities. If we're only interested in the types that occur and their multiplicities, we use character theory. So the multiplicity of the irreducible sigma just given by taking the inner product of the character of our representation with the character of sigma. Here we use the L2 norm. Now, that means I need to know how to find the character of a tensor product. So the rule is, if I take the character of pi tensor with pi prime, we just take the product of the characters. Now to see this, okay, we recall the definition of the character of pi, that's just going to be given by the trace of pi g. If we choose an orthonormal basis, u sub i for v, then we just use this formula here. So we're going to sum over the basis, and we're going to take each matrix coefficient using basis of vectors with themselves. Now, let's apply this to a tensor product. So let's suppose, okay, we have pi v, pi prime v prime. The u's are going to give us an orthonormal basis for v. The v's give us an orthonormal basis for v prime. Then we have an orthonormal basis for the tensor product by using all u sub i tensor with v sub j. We apply our definition of character. Okay, so I just write everything out. Then we apply our definition of inner product on the tensor space. So we separate each inner product here into two. Then we note, okay, these are all in i, these are all in j. So this separates out into two sums. First sum is going to be the character of pi. Second sum is going to be the character of pi prime. So we see that we have our rule tensor goes to a product of characters. With that formula, we have a rule for the multiplicity of an irreducible in a tensor product. We take the product of the characters, and we take the inner product of that with the character of the irreducible of interest. These get the fancy name Klebsch Gordon coefficients. Now, for an example, We'll use S3, so we set up the character table. Then I'm going to take the irreducible two-dimensional, tensor it with itself, and then do a three-fold tensoring. Here we're going to square each entry, so we get 4, 0, 1. Here we're going to cube each entry, so I get 8, 0, minus 1. 
If we're looking for multiplicities, I'm just gonna take the inner product of this row, say, with each of these. Now, we work them out. Okay, trivial type occurs with multiplicity one. Sign type occurs with multiplicity one. Irreducible two-dimensional occurs with multiplicity one. We check dimensions. Here, we have dimension two times two is four. Here, I have one plus one plus two is four, so that checks out. For the threefold tensor, okay, we work out. Multiplicity of trivial is one. Multiplicity of sine is one. Multiplicity of the irreducible two-dimensional is three. Check dimensions. Here we have two times two times two is eight. Here we're gonna have one plus one. Okay, this is two-dimensional, so we have two times three is six. So we get eight again, and that checks out. For another fancy check, if we take the inner product of our character with itself, that's gonna give us the sum of the squares of the multiplicities. So here, okay, when I work it out using the L2 norm, I get an 11. Using the multiplicities, we're gonna have one squared plus one squared plus three squared, which is also 11. So that also checks. With pi equals pi prime, we're always able to identify certain sub-representations in the tensor product. There's a general theory here, but we'll only consider two tensors. Then, things are simple enough that we get nice formulas for the characters. First up, we have alternating two tensors. For the vector space, we consider the span of all tensors of the form V tensor W minus W tensor V. It's what we call the wedge of V and W. So, if we change the order, we're going to pick up a minus sign, and that's what we mean by alternating. If I take the wedge of V with itself, then by definition I get zero. Now, see we have a sub-representation. Okay, I pick an element of the group. We apply the tensor action to a tensor in this form. So it's going to put a pi G before each V and W in the tensor. That gives me something in the form vector one tensor vector two minus vector two tensor vector one. So that lives in the span. That means sub-representation. Next, if we want to compute the dimension of our vector space, okay, I'll leave it to you to check that we have an orthonormal basis given as follows. Okay, and here, the u sub i's are going to form an orthonormal basis of v. For the indices, okay, here we're just going to use i strictly less than j. So for instance, if I pick a ui, okay, if I take the wedge with another ui, we get zero, so we don't count that. Then note, if I take any two of these that are distinct, okay, we'll be double counting because if I switch the order, we just pick up a minus sign. So we catch everything by just using i strictly less than j. Now, if we count the number of elements here, okay, well, how many choices do we have for ui? Okay, well, there it's gonna be the dimension of our vector space, so I'll call that n. I can't use ui again, so Choices for the second vector are n minus one. And then to avoid double counting, we divide by two. So n, n minus one divided by two. For the character formula, okay. If I take character, okay, of our group action evaluated g, okay, simple formula. What I do is I take the character of pi evaluated g squared minus the character of pi evaluated g squared, divide by two. Now, to see this, we're gonna use our orthonormal basis. So I'm gonna compute the trace using this basis. Now, if we write that out, okay, so we're gonna have pi g, and then vectors from the basis, just using the same indices. I pull out the one over square root of two to get a half out in front. Then we're gonna expand this out. Now you'll note, since we have the i and j's in either order, I can switch this i strictly less than j just to i not equal to j. And then we get this type of terms here. For the next step, we're gonna add zero. So we're gonna add in the terms where i is equal to j and then subtract them off again. We move the plus term to the first part, the minus term to the second part. And that's gonna leave us with two terms that we can simplify. Now, for this first part, we're just gonna sum over all i and j and then we see that that's gonna separate into a product of the character of pi on g twice. So I'm gonna have character of pi evaluated g squared. For this term here, same idea, we sum over all i and j, and then we have items like this, which we simplify on the next board. 
first step, we move this pi g to the second slot using unitarity. Then we can move these terms into the first slot along with summation over j. By Fourier's trick, this expression becomes pi g on ui. We can move the pi g inverse into the first slot to get a pi g squared. What I have here is just the character pi evaluated g squared, and that gives our formula. Now, to apply this to examples, okay, let's consider S3. First, we have the trivial representation. This will be more illustrative than useful. Our vector space is the complex numbers. Orthonormal basis, we have E1, which is just the number one. If we take the wedge of E1 with itself, we get zero. So all the alternating two tensors here are zero. Now, if we check our formulas for the character, okay, whatever I put into the trivial representation comes out of one. So we get one minus one or zero. If we check dimensions, okay, we have n, n minus one over two. Here, n is equal to one. So again, we get zero. So our formulas are consistent. For something non trivial, let's consider the irreducible two dimensional representation of S3. Okay, so here we have the character table for S3. We apply our character formula. So we're going to take character for pi 2 and square it. So 2 goes to 4, 0 to 0, minus 1 to 1. And then we want the character evaluated at each g squared. If I take the identity and square it, I get the identity back. So we're going to get a 2. If I take 1, 2, square it, we get the identity. So we're going to get a 2 here. Then if I take 1, 2, 3, square it, we get 1, 3, 2, which is in the same class. So we get the same value, minus 1. Now, we're going to take the difference and then divide by 2. So we want it with a 1, minus 1, and a 1 for the alternating 2 tensors. You'll note that means alternating 2 tensors are equivalent to the sign representation. We check the dimension. We have 2, 2 minus 1 over 2 is 1. And for an orthonormal basis, we have this here, if we're assuming the orthonormal basis on the irreducible 2 dimensional. We also have symmetric two tensors. Here, space is just the orthogonal complement of the alternating two tensors in B tensor V. Directly, this is the span of all two tensors of the form B tensor W plus W tensor V. Okay, and here we allow V to be equal to W. Note, if we switch V and W, okay, nothing happens, so symmetric. Now, if I want to count the dimension of this space, okay, we look for an orthonormal basis. So as before, okay, we're going to consider tensors of this type. Okay, I choose orthonormal basis for V, say use of I's. Here I'm going to switch the minus sign to a plus, and we still have I strictly less than J to avoid double counting. We also have to include tensors of the form UI tensor with UI. So if we count, we have N, N minus 1 over 2. Here we have N, we add, we get N, N plus 1 over 2. Now to check, if we add the dimension of the alternating two tensors, that's N, N minus 1 over 2, we get N squared, which is the dimension of V tensor V. For the character, okay, we evaluate a G. Same formula as before, except we change the minus sign to a plus. To see this, we just note we're writing V tensor V as an orthogonal direct sum of the alternating two tensors plus the symmetric two tensors. So if we add these characters, we get the character for V tensor V. We know this term, we know this term. So if I push this to this side, we get our formula. Now, for an example, Okay, we have S3 again. We consider the irreducible two-dimensional. So what do we do? We're going to square this. It's going to be a 4, 0, 1. We worked out character evaluated G squared. So it's a 2, 2, minus 1. And now we add and divide by 2. So we get a 3, 1, 0. You'll note here this is not irreducible. So we have that symmetric two tensors are equivalent to the trivial plus a pi 2. Okay, you can either work out the multiplicities, or just note if I take trivial plus pi 2, we get 3, 1, 0, and that matches. To check the dimension, okay, we take n, n plus 1 divided by 2. So here n is 2, so I have 2 times 3 divided by 2 is 3, and that checks out. As an application, let's use our formulas to fill in the character table for S4. First, we find the conjugacy classes in S4. 
These are given by cycle structure. So we have five of these, which means we have five irreducible classes of representations. Next, the commutator subgroup of S4 is A4. So the quotient, which is the abelianization, is a Z mod two. That means we have two characters, the trivial and sign representations. For another representation, I'll consider the usual action of S4 on C4. Okay, so here we just permute the standard basis vectors. If I want to compute the character of this representation, okay, we note with respect to this basis, the matrices are permutation matrices. So that means all zeros except for a one in each row and column. If we compute the character, taking the trace of these matrices, so to get a one on the diagonal means we're sending EI to itself. So this is just gonna be counting the number of points fixed by your group element. Now, on the character table, what do we have? So for this character, I have four, two, one, zero, and zero. We'll note there's a trivial representation in there. So if I pull that off, we're gonna get three, one, zero, minus one, minus one. If I take the sum of the squares of the entries, weighted, we get 24. So what's left over is an irreducible representation of S4. Now, we'll get the other representations by looking at alternating and symmetric two tensors. Now, for that, okay, I take the tensor of pi three with itself, so we get nine, one, zero, one, one. We're gonna take character for pi three evaluated each G squared, so the identity squares itself, so we get a three back. One, two squared is the identity, so we get a three. One, two, three is one, three, two, which is in the same class, so I get a zero. One, two, three, four, when I square that goes to parentheses one, three, parentheses two, four. So I'm gonna get a minus one. Then I'm gonna square parentheses one, two, parentheses three, four. We're gonna get the identity, so I get a three. We apply our formulas. Okay, so if we take the difference and divide by two, okay, alternating two tensors, we get three minus one, zero, one minus one. This has some of the squares, okay, weighted equal to 24, so it's irreducible. Note it's not in our original list, so that means we have a no one. Easier way to get this one is just to note this is pi three tensor with the sign representation. So it's gonna change the sign on these two entries. Looking at symmetric two tensors, okay, we get these numbers here. We take the sum of the squares weighted. We see that we have three irreducible types, okay, each with multiplicity one. If we check the multiplicities, we see that we get a trivial, a pi three, and then something else, which will have dimension two. We subtract off the characters for these, and we get two, zero, minus one, zero, two. Now, this pi two is also something we could have gotten otherwise. So what's happening here, if I take the subgroup formed by the identity and the class of product of disjoint two cycles, so it's a Z2 cross a Z2, it's gonna be a normal subgroup. So its quotient is gonna have six elements. And when we check that it's not abelian, we must have an S3. So all we're doing here is extending the irreducible two dimensional of S3 to S4 through this quotient. So that gives five irreducible classes of representations, which is what we were looking for. So we have the character table.